Hey guys, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. Um, just wanted to put together a really quick video for you to kind of just give you an update on the truck. So if you followed the channel, you've probably seen that I had a power steering leak and I'm gonna flip this around and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So on my old power steering line here, which I now believe is a low pressure line, I'm not 100% sure, which is why I just replaced the whole thing instead of doing like some sort of an aftermarket uh, power steering oil cooler which is basically what this thing is. So this runs from right back in there. It connects that tube. So you gotta, you know, use some pliers to separate those, uh, that clamp and move it back. Then you slide this out of the tube back there. It comes around here. There's a 10 mil right there. It comes around, goes up here. This is the cooler part of the power steering oil cooler. It goes back down here. I broke this clip or, or it was already broken. I don't know, it's probably me. Um, but then right here, my winch was just barely contacting the power steering. And when I put it in, I was like, you know, that's really close, but it's probably fine. And it's been like a year, year and a half. And it finally rubbed a tiny pinhole in it to where it started to leak power steering fluid. And then I actually, I heard the power steering start to whine a little bit. I noticed the drips underneath the truck and I tracked it down to right here. I saw the contact between the old winch and the line. Um, I bought this used on eBay for about 75 bucks, so it wasn't too bad. Again, I think, I'll put a link in the description below, I think, but verify this before you do it if you're doing this repair. Um, I think you can just buy like a $20, $25 power steering cooler, uh, like a universal power steering cooler that basically has this cooler part and then like flexible lines down here. Um, and what that would do is if you are contacting or rubbing or have anything like a winch or anything like that, so any sort of a hole, it's a really cheap fix to then be able to basically, you know, maybe cut off this line right here or put a burr on the end of it or, you know, get enough line that you could just run it all the way through there. Um, so you have to figure that out, but you could do something like that if you're pretty handy. Um, again, I bought this part used. Um, I'll put a link to the one that I got on eBay down below as well, but I got this used for like 75 bucks. Um, and then it runs over here. So there is, you know, like I said, the 10 mil right there. You go up to the oil cooler, 10 mil right there. Go back down, follow this line over. And then there's another 10 mil right there. And then straight back in there, if you can see it, um, there's another like clamp that holds the tube onto the metal tube. So the rubber hose onto the metal tube. Um, so anyways, that has now been replaced. Probably took me 10, 15 minutes, not too bad. Um, so pretty easy repair, you know, three 10 mils, I'm doing a couple of hoses and uh, it's good as new. All right guys, it's really windy, sorry. Um, so yeah, I've got everything hooked back up, that you can't see in there. I've got everything hooked back up. The new line is in, everything looks really good. Um, just to kind of give you a really brief rundown of how to refill the power steering fluid. So obviously once you take the line off, right? You want to have like an oil pan or something underneath of it to catch the drainage because all your fluid's going to come out of there. Now, I did watch a Chris Fix video and he said that you could jack up the car to kind of get a little bit more fluid out of it. I wasn't really worried about the condition of the fluid. I just needed to replace that part. And so I just let whatever drained out drain out. And then basically what I did is it says in your manual just to fill until it hits the full mark, right? So the hot full, well, the cold full right now because it was cold, but I've run it for a little bit, so now it's warm. Um, but so basically what I did was I filled this up all the way pretty much. Now you don't want to overfill it, but the first time when you're first putting that fluid in, it's going to have air in the system, right? So as I was pouring it in, I filled it up to the top. I gave it a few minutes, kind of let it settle. Um, and then what you do is what the Chris Fix video said was that you turn on the car just for like two, three seconds maybe. You don't want to hear any loud noises or anything like that. You don't want to hear the power steering whine. You just want to turn it on to give that pump a few seconds to kind of run the um, fluid through the line. So I turned on for two, three, four seconds, turned off the truck, came back around, and my fluid was down pretty much to the minimum line. So it was pretty much down at the minimum. So quite a bit of the fluid went through there. Um, so what I did was I filled it back up to like a little above the max hot line. So, you know, what would be the max that you would want it to be at when you're hot. And then I turned the truck on. And then what I did was I did lock to lock three times. So I did turn the wheel all the way to the right one time till it locked all the way back to the left one time till it locked and then all the way back to the right. And then I centered it again. So that's it. Um, once I did that, I came around and it was pretty much just about perfect. I might've put a couple more uh, ounces in it um, just to kind of top it off and get it to that max um, cold line. And, uh, and then I ran the truck for, you know, 20, 30 seconds and just kind of let the, the air go through it. I came around, I looked at it and it was, there were no bubbles in it. It was just, you know, smooth as could be in there. The fluid is, looks really good. Um, so, you know, I, and then I went around and I checked, um, all my fittings where I reattached that 
you know, that you can't hardly see back in there, but where I reattached this hard line to the rubber hoses, and I don't see any leaks coming off of that either. So just to be safe for a little bit, I'm gonna carry some power steering fluid with me. Um, but that's all done. It was actually really, really easy. And again, it's probably even making the videos and kind of taking my time and listening to music and stuff. It's probably taking me 25, 30 minutes to do this whole thing. Um, super, super easy. So if you guys are doing this, tackling this job, and you have any questions, feel free to post up in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. Um, but now it's time to put the winch in here. So let's go. All right, guys. So this is the new winch. Um, you know, previously I had a Smitty built 9500 XRC uh, winch that was nice and, and I used it I only had to use it a couple times but it worked really well didn't have any problems with it I just figured you know when I was taking that out it's probably about five or six seven years old now that winch um, it's been sitting on the truck for the last couple of years this is a brand new one that I had in a box that I got because it was a good deal uh, like a year ago it's just been sitting in my garage in the box it is like a Chinese winch but I mean hilariously when I took off the smitty belt on the bottom of it there's a big sticker that says made in China anyways so I was kind of like well you know, this is a brand new winch. I've had it sitting in the garage forever. It's a 12,000 instead of a 9,500 pound. Um, I like how the clutch is located. It's it's a little bit easier. My other one would have needed to be clocked. And that's actually, I hadn't gotten around to doing that, but that's actually what rubbed the hole in my, my power steering line. Um, so this solves that problem. It gets me a brand new winch. It's got a synthetic line. Um, I'm gonna move over my Factor 55 flat link to this one. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about this thing. I mean, this is a big boy. You can see that takes up pretty much that whole wham bumper in there. Um, but it'll be nice to have a brand new winch um, with a little more pulling power. So I'm gonna get this all hooked up. I'm gonna get the bumper back on, the grill back on, and then I'm pretty much ready for my trip to Georgia. So uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update and show you what's going on. All right guys, so I just finished it up. As you can see, I had to cut a pretty big hole in the bumper to get that winch to fit in there. But the solenoid, the place with the remote or whatever you wanna call it, the controller, is right up there on top. And then the clutch is right over there on the side. So I've got plenty of room in there. Um, I also kind of had to fix it because the way it was cut before was kind of janky. But the old uh, Smitty built, I put the solenoid kind of up at an angle here. So it just had like a hole cut in it. So I just kind of smoothed that out as best I could and just kind of made it one big open sort of gaping hole in the front of the truck. Um, it's a nice thing about having an older truck. You don't feel so bad about it. But while I had it off, I bedlined everything, bedlined the grill, bedlined the bumper. Um, just reattached everything, got the winch all mounted up, got a pre-tension. Um, so good to go for this weekend's trip. Also got the power steering, as I you know said earlier in this video, all fixed up and no leaks, no nothing. Seems to be working perfect. So good little bit of work done today. Feel good about it.